This hits three times for 33. Oh my god, it does. Nice. Slice and dice, baby. So I think this game looks very interesting, too. It seems like it's got a, a lot going on, but there's some very, very cool mechanics at play here. Banners of Ruin. Welcome, welcome, everybody, to the sponsored segment. So, Banners is a game that's been a little bit on my uh, on my radar. Banners Ruin is a, uh, a deck-building RPG slash strategy title, I guess would be the, the best way to call it, where you control a, an adventuring party of anthropomorphized animal folks and battle uh, deck-building style. So there's some definite overlap with some of the other titles that we've, uh, we've played on the stream so far. I do like the jam so far. And yeah, it brings, uh, Redwall is uh, immediately what comes to mind, uh, the fantasy series depicting the adventures and struggles of this kind of, like, animal kingdom. Definite Redwall vibes. So, I should, I should clarify and disclose this is a sponsored segment, the, the publisher was kind enough to reach out and hook me up with... Uh, a sponsored bit to, to show off this title in exchange for fair compensation. If this is your first time checking out this game, you're not alone. I have actually never played before, and we're going to be learning kind of together what this title is all about and how to play. New campaign. So there are six different races. I think you only start with, uh, yeah, the mouse and the bear at the start. And each race of uh, animal has a different set of passive abilities and I think a different set of card unlocks. Mice have talents and passives focusing on multi-strike attacks and bears have pa talents and passives focusing on high upfront damage. I appreciate that we've got a randomize all button. There is a tutorial, I think. I'm gonna say, no thanks, let's just begin and see what the experience is like. City walls. So I think there's streets or something, there's a, a certain number of areas that we're going to uh, progress through here. We can see a starting deck of cards. Got some fairly self-explanatory blocks. Long sword. Some costs here. A yellow and a blue cost. Let's see if the the tutorial uh, tooltips will will give us that. So, weapons, helping hand, provisions. A hooded figure emerges from the shadows, startling you for a moment. They reveal a friendly token and offer you something for the road. Or gain a random upgrade token. Looks like we're picking probably a starting bonus of some kind. Service at the end of this lane. Service. Interesting. So we're choosing not only an immediate bonus, but looks like a, a lane down the street. I'll take the gem. Got a gain five block gem. Swans take cover. I see what take cover does. Not easily. Got a few interesting little um, instances of iconography on the cards. Instead of keywords, there are icons. I kind of like that for, for bleed. That's neat. That's very neat. Let's double up one of the guards, I guess. Did that move it? Yes, there it is. Okay, and it looks like Probably should have done the tutorial, but <laughs> it looks like we're progressing towards the end of the lane. Blocked. Blocked combat. 
sharp granite stones flank you, thick with moss and smelling foul. This tunnel doesn't see much use, so I can't, yeah, I can't even click on them. So we have to go into our first combat here. You emerge from the black and find yourself in one of the guard bunks. Where the devils did you come from? You can't be here. All right, so, combat. This is kind of a once per combat ability, looks like. Remove all stacks of debuff, gaining block per stack remove. Got here. Gain three charge. Kind of like uh, damage on your next attack. Strike deals straight up damage. If active character is front rank. Oh, there's two ranks. Oh, I think I should do the uh, do the tutorial. Hold on. <laughs> In fact, I, I am going to go back and do the tutorial. Because it looks like the combat's a little bit more involved than I thought. So let's... Look at the tutorial. Take a look. The Blackfoots have been dealt a mighty blow by the fearsome house Ender. Landon seeks his revenge. You and others loyal to the cause have been tasked with bringing the great city of Dawn's Point to its knees. The odds are against you. Okay, number of cards in your deck, the number of many members in the party, and the Florins. Okay, so that's our money. Florins. Yes, that's all of our cards. Party screen. Okay, we can change our positions here. There's crude hatchet equipped as their primary weapon. So each character has a primary and secondary weapon. Take another one-handed weapon card. So it looks like you can just equip a card to these slots. Two-handed weapons take up both weapon slots. The campaign takes, across, takes place across several streets, each with an elite enemy at the end. Each lane in the street leads to a service. Once you're done with a service, you'll move to the next street. Cards on the left and right have counters. After selecting a card, any counters on the remaining cards will tick down. When they reach zero, they'll be removed from the street. So I can take either, either Pot Shot or the Herbal Remedy. Plus XP or Heal Party to 100%. So there's also level ups, 0 out of 500 XP. I think it wants me to take the healing, which then, yes, removes. You need to regroup with your companion who must be somewhere in the center lane. You'll have to resolve that combat to see what's further down. Yes, teach me, teach me how to front row, back row here. So in this game, the health is called Vitality. If it reaches zero, the character dies and is removed from the party. So we've got permadeath for characters. Defense is granted by your armor. So we start with... Start with some amount of block based on the armor you have equipped. wonder if that persists from turn to turn or not. All characters have a Stamina and Will stat. Stamina replenishes to the max value each turn, but Will does not. Cards cost both. Stamina and the Will. Yellow and blue. Let's see what our enemy will do on their next turn by looking at their intent. Oh, there's the intents at the bottom of their feet. I actually didn't even see these initially. Deal 8 damage and apply... Whatchamadoodle. Yes, okay. Let me stack in the order of their position. These enemies are both in the front rank, but you'll encounter others in the back, too. Weapon cards can only be played by the character who's wielding that weapon. That makes sense. And they'll have a symbol matching the character. On the card, then click on the targets. It's many, many click throughs. The rush will deal one by three, but 
with the charge modifier that becomes 3x3, three three, right? Bonk, bonk. And we have no mercy. For zero. Can't play any more cards, so we should end our turn. Cards are final. Yes, so shuffle is normal. Do we get to retain? No, we discard and then draw new. Okay, so fairly standard uh, deck building mechanics here, although we interestingly only get, it looks like, two stamina per turn. Get him. Get money and a card. In a combat party is awarded XP split between the characters. Don't have to take a card. There's a back option. Or marked. When a marked character dies, it makes everything else vulnerable. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, two, two stamina per character. So I imagine with more characters, you get to have a bigger and better turns, right? Two damage equal to your weapon damage. So it looks like swapping out your equipment to, to get better stats is going to be pretty important. If the active character is in the front rank, do weapon damage. If in the back rank, apply ch 5 charge to the ally in the front. Let's grab a coordination. Move on. So that's just the uh, tutorial after all. When a character levels up, you can choose to give them an extra point in either Stamina or Will. They'll also unlock either a Talent or a Passive Ability. Yeah, Passives are exactly as they sound, kind of like Relics. Talents are cards that are unique to the character and that only they can play, just like Weapon cards. Okay. Level up! So all Stamina and turn it into Charge. Reckless Burst, deal 3x3 three three to the opponent's lane. Give yourself an injury, or swap the enemies front and back. I'll take this Reckless Burst. And we upgrade other Stamina or Will, plus Stamina, please. Congratulations! You emerged victorious, revealing your companion. Select an old friend to add them to your party. Any cards he's carrying will be added to our deck. So we kind of just, like, merge them all together. Interesting. Ambush blocks all the remaining lanes. Resolving any one of these cards removes them all. And they're all the same. Combat number two. Enemies on different ranks attack on alternating turns. The next rank that will attack is indicated by the red bar at their feet. If you kill all enemies on the active rank, the opponent's turn is skipped. Okay, so in multi-enemy fights like this, we don't have to deal with all of the enemies each turn. Gotcha. Cards are played by the active character, so we have to select our character before changing the card that we want to play, right? That's right. Sparring a sword. Attack all targets in the rank. Tells who they're gonna attack? Question mark? Made the attacks all together. How oh, they're targeting you. This icon means they'll attack the frontmost character in the indicated lane. It's the most common type you'll see from enemies using melee weapons, but sounds like other types of targeting can happen. Interesting. This type of attack can be evaded by moving to another lane. So if we're not in the lane... So we can use Withdraw to move a character to the other position. Uses Bear's Point of Will. Sure. Go here. have another trick up their sleeves. 
Each race of animal has their own ability unique to them which can be used at any time in combat by spending a will point. You can hover the ability button to see a description or view them all when the main menus unlock screen. This one is... For each hit in your next attack, gain three charge and remove fury and charge from the target. So we... Do that and then want to... We get more charge if we rush first, it seems it wants us to strike first. Rush against the rear enemy. Interesting. You want me to kill the other one? Interesting. Oh, because we already evaded their damage by moving the bear. Okay. I understand. This turn, you're attacking... you? And if by killing that enemy we all... Obviously, also don't contemplate this. Calculating strike. Two preparation. So your turn draw two additional cards. Ooh, that does cost two, though. Grab another zero cost. For the purposes of this tutorial. Which we've completed! Alright. Now we'll go back to our regular run. I don't think I fully grasped all the minutia of how to uh, avoid enemy attacks. But we'll figure that out. So, can't start with a gem this time. Let's increase a character's stats. Here, Sanderson. You have plus one stamina to start this run. Sanderson and Sanisford, the mouse and the bear, they venture forth... ...on an adventure. I don't think we've unlocked whatever that is, uh, Alice. Just getting started. I'm pretty sure I could change their names. That seems pretty likely. All right, what do we got here to work with? What is in the actual starting deck at this point? Uh, guard rush. Character cannot be play cards. Understood. So we're attacking for eight. Look to this slot of the bear. So you're telling me that by withdrawing the bear, we could avoid both of these? That's what, that's what we learned last time, right? Other option is maybe block. We're only doing 16 after all. We perfectly block that. Kill the mouse. They're both still targeting this spot. So that should mean that I don't take any damage. You get booted. Okay, so attack was dodged. This turn, the back rank is attacking. We've established that we can avoid... Avoid their turn by simply killing them. So this is 
Only the bear can longsword. Bonk. So that was two of our stamina. We have three left. Let's do this. And that inflicted four bleeding. Okay. Emerge victorious. Playing a new card, Experience Strike. Deal five damage each time you play this card in combat, give it plus five damage. Reset the damage if it's unplayed. So it sounds like this does reset per combat. Field dressing can remove bleeding or quick hands. Draw one card, gain three preparation, although that does cost two. But that's massive card draw. Oh, I love this music. No skip button, but you're allowed to... You're not allowed to not take a card. You just have to click the back button. If you don't use it, it loses its damage. That's right. And that's right, preparation ticks down. So this is draw one card, and then next turn draw three, then the turn after that draw two, then the last turn after that draw one. And if you can keep stacking preparation as a effect, you can get more and more and more card draw out of it. Let's grab that. Especially since we have bonus stuff on our mouse. Small hatchway leads into a damp, dark chamber beyond the city wall for House Blackfoot. Don't know a whole lot about the, the, the story at the moment. Dice Sphere. I can't exactly speak to where we are or what we're doing. But we know that there are foes in our path. Three of them. All attacking for eight. Two of them attacking the bear, one of them attacking the mouse. Let's see what we got here. Five, deal five. Five. If this breaks the target's block, gain two strikey power. So hatchet strike will kill the mouse. Right, that'll cost uh, two of our three stamina on Sanders in here. So we do get two of that charge, so this is now deal seven? Yes, good. Ooh. Uh The bear doesn't have enough armor to full block, so we'll... Stamina. Attack this guy. It's a rabbit. So do we get to keep that block? Yes, we do. We do get to keep that three block. Makes sense, since you start with block from your armor, that you'd be able to keep it from turn to turn. So these are once per combat, right? combat, uh, or next attack does stuff. Gain 9 charge, plus 9 damage on this character's next attack. Love it. Uh, actually, you're attacking, yes, the bear. Poke. Poke, poke. Oh yeah, and then energy and cards are behind me. Hmm. Let's see if I can fix that, actually. That'll be a bit better. Mini Baylor! Sneak it in there.
Distraction. When this card is discarded by a character, choose an ally to apply 18 block, or an opponent to deal 18 damage to their block. It's a strange, strange card. Sweet kick. Select a target, move them to a vacant position on their rank. Wonder if that works on our own units. Let's grab a sweep kick and see if we can um, see if we can figure out how to positionally pull shenanigans. All right, we choose one of these three. Crazy weasel. The weevil, weasel babbles at passerby, splattering them with spittle from his foaming mouth. He's clearly alarmed, but struggling to make sense. Courage. Strength can be found through adversity, a chance to improve. Or high spirits. Gain high spirits. Start your next combat with one vigor. Which makes your first uh, stamina cost free. Take the a chance to improve. Some enders are hot on your tray on your tail. You turn a corner to find a seemingly dead end. Sensford yells, "Over here, a hatch!" Bah, the cursed thing is sealed. Force it open, giving Sensford plus one stamina, but minus ten vitality. Or enter combat. Giving us a combat. One more stamina seems good. Let's crack it open. Senna's Ford is exhaustively bludgeons the lock with their weapon until it finally thunders open. Quick, get in! As Senna's Ford begins to heave the doors shut, a deft arrow finds its mark in their shoulder. Disappear into the shadows. So that's one more resource to spend per turn. Ten is a lot of damage, though. Almost half of their HP. Elite combat. Blackfoot agents. This card's a random combat. Wait! Oh, cool art. There you are, a voice declares as you emerge from a stifling black back alley. Run them down. the elite oh my god <laughs> that is a much nastier set of enemies than we've uh, than we've encountered so far holy heck well this does not look very promising each one of these enemies has more combined health than the entirety of all the previous fights we've done so uh, that's bad Steal bonus damage from the back rank? My god, we're super dead. <laughs> Our attacks do like five damage. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Okay, I understand. Uh, so currently the front row is gonna go. We're gonna attack mostly the mouse. begin to not have this go terribly for us. My question. Is there a rush in the draw pile? No, we've only got one rush, right? Now the back row is attacking, doing 
40 damage out of 24 health. Hmm. But if I can sweep kick my own mans... Oh, it doesn't work on your own friends. Alright, well... That does not help me then. I understand. Oh, oh, but we do have withdraw. That's a good lesson to learn the hard way, actually. I'm completely cool with that. Lesson to learn early. I'm I'm totally cool losing the the first run to to get some very valuable information here. One, elite fights are not to be messed with. Like that, just work on yourself. That's also good information. Got a mezzy. Defeat. All right, so we do get a few unlocks at least. The beetle hook. I like that. So we can see all the uh, all the races here: mouse, bear, weasel, wolf, hare, beaver. Try again. Eight max vitality, that's huge. On both of them? Who got the max HP? They both did. Well, that's great. It seems like the story is that you're... you're fleeing. You've done something you shouldn't have done, and now we're on the run. intuitive to play cards on certain characters sometimes. Really like it overall. So the front row is still attacking again, looks like. If there's only one row with enemies in it. Although that causes them to skip their turn, right? That's correct. No toot. Deadly Thrill. Deal 10, and if the target dies, refund the price. Sunder does damage just to the block. Linking Strike. Deal weapon damage. If this is the only opponent in the lane, do plus 10. Interesting. Drummers, thank you so much for the four months. Let's take the Deadly Thrill. For that uh, bonus on killing. Enter the city here. Or House Blackfoot. Not 
sure if there's any difference between which of the three you click on there. Oh sweet, here's Deadly Thrill actually doing something. Good. Everybody. Way so the bear doesn't take damage. Boop. So the bear's special removes any status effects that they have and gives you block in replacement for it. That experience strike again. Deal five damage to the rank, apply five crippled. Whenever the character moves, they take damage equal to the crippled. Grab one flanking strike. Brutish thug shaking down a merchant. Swig of the good stuff. Let's talk to the weasel. What's up, Mr. Weasel Man? The weasel babbles at you with a manic grin on his face before spluttering into a fit of coughs. Want to change a piece of yourself? Wheezy can help. Transform a skill. I'm in. Let's transform a strike. Surely there are better cards, right? Oh, we get to choose one of three, too. I love it. Poison tip applies three poison. Poison increases by one at each turn, not decreases. So poison is three, four, five, so on and so forth. That's pretty cool. Zero cost damage. If the target dies, draw three. Overbearing swing. Deal weapon damage. If you're using a two-handed weapon, do this to the entire lane. Let's take the poison. That's right. Poison increases each turn, not decreases. Gain doggedness. From a dog, I assume. Find an upgrade token. Let's take a token. We get a minus one will cost token. Oh, sweet. So we can make our withdraw not cost any will anymore. Of course, now we don't have our use for will. But that's okay. Failing grants on making it to a million. One million waffles. A card, move it to this lane. Interesting. Let's take a combat. Does this cost your will? Yes. Okay, yes. That does... You do spend will on the race traits. That's right. Rito, thank you so much for the Prime sub and those five months of support. What do we got here? An Enforcer. End turn. Ends Fury. Well, I have no idea what this targeting icon is supposed to indicate to me. <laughs> we're, going, we're going down, and there's a, an open bracket. Somewhere off screen, there must be a closed bracket. Bend to the bear. Also, bracket icon. I, I'd love if there was some kind of like dictionary or definitions for each of these little icons. Sounds like that is hitting both of us. And yes, we can we can actually see that when we mouse over them. <laughs> mouse? When we mouse over them, uh, both of our characters light up in red, indicating they're both being targeted. Okay. Noted. I do 22 damage. Yes. I did that wrong. Better. 
Have some bleed, sir. Moves to a random making position. Characters bleeding does more damage. No, sorry. If they're bleeding, it does less damage. Excuse me. Draw much block, though. than I'd be happy with. It's okay. It's to the lane, but then the targeting icon doesn't show it targeting the lane? That's really weird. Why oh, can't it? Oh, because this is your, your card. Hmm. Odd. Oh, wait, lanes and ranks. Understood. Different things. I understand. Always in that nerd. Henry BK, thank you so much for the Prime sub and those 14 months of support. A to you too. Both characters level up. Second wind. Draw a card and gain one bigger. Ooh, another poison tip. Probably want. Yeah, probably want more of those. That's right. Okay, so level them up. Upgrade stamina or will. Let's upgrade the stamina for now. Got a new card, new talent card. Exertion. Pick one card from your discard to move to your hand. But the next card you play is exhausted. Lightning Strikes. Four stamina. Deal four by three and gain five counter. Five retaliate. Move to the start of the next turn. If this breaks the target's guard, refund the cost. Wow. Refund card or refund cost? Not sure. Not sure. Cool under pressure. Start of every turn, gain two overwhelm. And two stamina. Every stack of overwhelm, the character receives more damage from attacks. So it seems like a stamina generator. I'll take the exertion then. Don't want any of that other stuff. And we'll upgrade your stamina as well. And damage plus five. Breaks the target guard, deal it again. Gain two winded. So minus two stamina on the next turn. Galvanize, double the character's block. This seems exceedingly good given that everybody has um, essentially barricade to begin, right? Get it? Barricade? Huh? I gotta try it. An altar. Humble Cedarwood Shrine. Smells like home. Nobody seems to be paying it any attention. Nobody from Dawn's Point, anyway. Pillarkin. 
weasel and an otter skittishly haul a barrel through the crowds. Offering to buy cards or combat. Let's take the altar here. You're navigating some narrow shortcuts when you hear a crash behind you. One of your party has stumbled through a rotten wooden wall. You peer in and see a humble cedar wood shrine. Plus 15 max vitality. Hell yeah. Give that bear some tanking. Chest with a crow's foot engraved on the back of the lock. Equipment stowed in advance. Or gain high spirits. This only applies for one combat, so I'm really not inclined to take high spirits as a uh, as a possible reward. What's in the box? Loot. Heavy armor. Start combat with 30 block. Gain 5 block and 1 winded every turn. Wow. Elchin. 11 damage. If the opponent has no block, apply 5 bleed. Opponent tends to attack this character. Deal 1 by 4 to adjacent opponents on the rank. Gain 4 charge. It's got to be better than the hatchet, right? Superior heavier armor every turn. Start combat with 38 block, gain 10 block, and 2 winded every turn. Holy crap. That seems really good with the double your block card, right? Oh, and the light armor is also giving them 1 stamina every turn. So they're actually gaining 1 bonus currently. I understand. So this will bring them back down to 2. This is just an upgrade to... Dannington's armor. Does it actually animate on them? that in the stash. This is longsword. The rank. Let's swap to the falchion and the axe. Put that bear in some heavy armor. Oh, I love it. It looks great. Looks so good. You dual wield. Yes! Longsword is two-handed, though. I don't really want this hatchet. The longsword. Your attention turns to the clatter of heavy steel as several armored men cross your path. Their sly, helmet-muffled voices hurl insults at the common folk as they move through the crowd. Grab some provisions. It's not an elite fight, it's a regular fight, at least it looks like a regular fight. That card had a three on it, so it'll still be there. May the wind always be at your back. Taunt. Select a target if the position in front of them is vacant. Move them into it. I like Calculating Strike, giving us some prepared here. All party members gain three bleeding. Apply double your party's total bleeding to a target. <laughs> yeah, that is the... <laughs> That's good. That's good art. <laughs> I'll take that Calculating Strike. And the road rise up to meet ya. Clear street to this depth. Not sure what that means. Let's take a combat. Surely this won't murder me. Like last time. Just three bears wielding... What the hell are you guys holding? What are those? What? I 
This is in the stash. Still takes up space in the deck? Oh. Interesting. Noted. Tends to attack this character. So the first two bears are going to attack uh, Dennington here. Adjacent opponents. So how does this work with with this? I gotta know. Okay, that that only gave me four charge. But that was wildly entertaining, so thank you. They're all pretty similar. Gain more damage each turn, which is kind of spooky. Bludgeon. If the opponent has more than 18 block, applies for bleed. Oh, very clever. Very clever. Just take one out then. Guess I don't really want to galvanize then, huh? Each getting bludgeoned one time. Start of their turn. Start of the turn, okay. Have some poison. Ungalvanize takes willpower. I guess I will double it. Gifted. So notably, I can't play it multiple times if it costs willpower now, can I? Okay, not bad at all. Gain a card. Every time you move, gain 5 charge. Every time you move an opponent, deal 5 damage. Gain block equal to the total block of adjacent allies in the rank. So we can use that to transfer our block from the bear to the mouse. Kind of interesting. Or precision. If this character's next attack deals damage to vitality, apply bleed equal to half that. True Bear Jew, thank you so much for those six months. I think this game looks very interesting, too. It seems like it's got a, a lot going on, but there's some very, very cool mechanics at play here. Let's grab, I'll grab protection. Apply two bleed if you're dual wielding daggers, apply one more. So I'm going to ditch the longsword if it has to just stay in my inventory like that. I think two bleed is very good. They've stumbled across you. One of them figured you out and alerted the others. All right. To the search party here. This looks pretty manageable, though. Let's see. End image. Five to the rank. Five to the rank. So let's apply some poison, then. We'll use the quick attacks on the front one.
So yeah, poison does go up each turn. Looks like poison... Poison is damage. Whereas bleeding is life loss. So poison can be blocked, but bleed cannot be blocked. That's odd. Yeah, that just feels weird. This character. So much free block. Okay, now we're attacking our mouse. the opponent's lane, so if we withdraw here, here, it should whiff. The whiff. Oh, the bear can rush. Nice. Sabate it. Good. Jing. Terrible wound. By wound, this character's bleed no longer ticks down. So sweep kick for moving or brace. In anticipation. Reduce the next incoming damage of this character to zero. And then increase the stamina cost of this card by one. So it's a buffer? Of sorts? I like it. Me that. Search party's begun. Not sure what the crossroads mean necessarily. Some enders are hot on your tail. Dennington. More stamina, but minus vitality. We definitely want more stamina. Was hoping we'd get it on the bear. Or I can take a combat. Remember, combats give us experience. Let's try the uh, the combat option this time. Want to see what it's like. We get these three. Definitely a bit uh, tougher here. Poison will be definitely helpful here. Okay, sweet. I'll get this one first. Actually, seems like if I could if I could push one of them into a, a second row, we could. Yeah, we've got kick here, right? Yes. Yeah, so if the target behind them is vacant, move them into it. Remember that each row only attacks every other turn. So if we can take a one lane combat or one row combat, turn it into a two row combat, it's going to be a lot easier to deal with. is raised to 35, then deals damage. 2 by 4. Go back. Let's apply poison to you. To you. I set some block. We've used all of our stamina. We swapped around. 
around a bit. So now the back row is going. This guy is just doing 12 damage and gaining 5 defense. Okay, this is way more manageable now. Apply even through the block, I imagine, right? Get some hits in. Let's go ahead and double this block. Beefy Bear. Okay, now the front row goes, doing 12 plus 8. Not a problem. That guy in the back. Of course, now it's a one-lane combat again. I guess I should have thought about that. Some more block. Okay, Mouse is having a bit of a hard time. Slow combat style we're doing. Should be effective now. Right, same deal as before. Split them up. Applies bleeding if they have no block at the start of the attack. That makes sense. Fifteen defense damage. Character has no neighbors in rank. Deal zero instead. Interesting. This character. The character who is attacking. Understood. So this is gain block equal to the total block of adjacent allies on the rank. Yes, yeah, sending us to 98 block. Okay. Sure? Sure. Sure, why not? Interestingly, if they act less often, they'll also take damage from their damage over time effects less often. Kind of funny how that works. And yeah, uh, no, I'm not allowed to use that on the mouse. Good. Yeah, the turn counter is our turns, I think. That's right. 
the next thing exhaust or whatever. There we go. 27 rounds. What about a poison tip? Not sure if it's helpful to grab more of the same cards. Start skipping here. Okay, let's see what Crossroads does. Clear street to this depth. Discard everything. Okay. These different icons. One's got a. Is that an elite? Not clear. Try the middle one. The icon up top there is our progress through the street, I believe. Once we... As we reach the end of the street, there'll be an elite combat. Our, kind of our, our boss, so to speak. Scoundrels and thugs. How dare they? Almost. Attacks. I appreciate I can just use one card to gain uh, 50 block though, you know? And easy that one. Both to level three. I think another calculating strike might be okay to give us even more card draw. What is Wretched Assault? Six damage X times for each ruin in your discard pile. Another calculating strike. Alright, upgrade your stamina again so you can wear the really heavy armor, probably. We get a new passive. Whenever this character gains block plus five block, impervious. Strikes and guards are doubly effective when played by this character. That's pretty powerful. Doubling the effective strength. Or whenever this character plays a card costing three or more, they gain a stamina and draw a card. Let's just take the Impervious, so that they are the ultimate block man. So both stamina and will are different uh, resources you can spend during combat. Different cards cost uh, different amounts. We'll go for four stamina on you as well. We got here, Cold-Blooded. Whenever this character ruins a card... They gain five charge. We haven't found any way to ruin cards yet. At the start of the turn, if this character has no allies on their rank, they gain... If you block in one stamina, or start each combat with plus two will. Sure, I'll take the two will. 
We'll have some uses for that, I'm sure. Combat. Off-duty guards, which turns into drunken guards. These silly louts reek of booze and other wicked activities. Leave them to their devices and they'll probably pass out, but you could brush them aside if needed. Or buy cards from the juggler. A very acrobatic hare throws all kinds of objects high into the air in a dramatic display. She seems to be drawing them out of thin air. Image for ruin card in hand. Still no way to ruin cards, though. Set up. Apply too vulnerable. Draw a card. Hey, good client. So each card has two costs. A stamina cost, which is the more readily available resource, and a will cost below it in blue. You must pay both prices to, to play a card. So I'll take one setup. Runkin Guards. Buy an opportunity to fleece these idiots for every penny on them. They'll face worse when they're disciplined. Weapons and armor. Or more buying cards. Let's check out the armory. You approach the reserves finding untidy stacks of weapon crates on the left and some chests of armor on the right. Only have time to look at one set before they return. Or push my luck and enter an elite combat. Last elite didn't go so well, but I think we could do better this time, probably. And I get to look at the weapons and armor first? Okay. Fine. Let's <laughs> let's maybe lose. Armor 14, superior medium armor. And another battle axe. A rundle dagger. Deals 6 by 2 damage, applies 5 bleed. Oh, I like that. Make that in there. Apply the superior heavy armor. So, way more block, but we get less uh, stamina on the big boy. But much block. Okay, this looks actually a lot more manageable than the last elite combat, too, hey? These are much, much lower health enemies. With much less damaging attacks. Oh, that's right, and Winded can be lost to... ...to stuff, too. That's good. Three weasels. Alright, so I've got to know. Let's try to strike and then battle axe. So with three charge, how does this work? Okay, that still doesn't count as attacking me. Understood. Well, that's done. But very well. Back row goes. Don't look like they're too much of a problem. Gain block, you gain block. So much block.
He's so winded he can't even do anything. That's just real. That's going to apply bleed to the bear. Not much I can do about that. Yeah, not much I can do about that. Take something from the discard pile. Play double your... Double your block to 100. It sounds great. Be back by Deadly Thrill. That's a free kill there. That did get rid of that card, but that's also okay. These animals with bows are, they're weasels or ferrets, something like that. Yeah, sneaky. That's what they are. Sneaky. Alright, no more back row. It's so much block. <laughs> Success. One more calculated strike. Let's be math build. That should give us like consistent draw up time or something. Well, that went well enough. Do we risk it for the biscuit with another elite fight? I'm gonna say yes we do. There you are! Run them down. Alright, here's the elite combat we died to before. This is the same one. Good. Good. She both intend to attack. A giant iron bear. It's the back line that I'm most afraid of. I have to know how this battle axe works, though. Oh, we got double block on turn one? That's good. Okay. Yeah, I have to know how this works. So let's give... Charge. And then attack with Battle Axe. We are being attacked, so this should do 1 by 4 to adjacent characters, right? Okay, yes, that does not get the damage bonus, though. Fair enough.
one down. Eight plus six to the lane. Again, pretty reasonable here. Definitely don't want to clear one row entirely for that same reason of um, the fight is a lot easier when there's two rows of enemies versus just one. Because of the way that stuff works. Just gain a crap little block here. 98 block, how about? Bear is continuously winded by his heavy armor. He's gaining two winded per turn and like 15 block per turn because of the super heavy armor. Move opponent backwards in the lane. If position is occupied, deal six damage instead. Interesting. One rabbit down. Didn't do post damage. Just because I don't know what a lane is. Yeah, two stamina per turn for this heavy ass armor. Totally worth it though. Totally worth it. And yeah, we can just keep stacking the. Where's that preparation? Racked. Oh, there it is, over the character. Yes. Just draw 10 cards per turn now? Sounds good to me. <laughs> yeah, this seems really good. <laughs> Maybe even too good? Maybe.
section can be redrawn and played again. Pretty wild. Hundred florins. A card pick. Akimbo. Deal weapon damage if dual wielding. Attack twice more. That's good with our bear. Wildfire. Deal four damage to opponent party. All of them. All of them. But for three costs, seems like a lot. Double T. Gain six block and one charge if this character has any adjacent allies of the same race. They all gain twelve block and five charge. So. Seems like it'd be really good with a, a particular type of team. Let's take a Kimbo, since the bear is dual wielding. What we got here, equipment wise? Two superior medium armors. That's good. Onwards! Looks like your presence in the city is becoming noticed. It's only gonna get harder from here. Blackfoot Stash. Chance to offload. Your brothers have offloaded their unneeded wares here. So it sounds like you can carry around stuff to sell. Cultist wares. A group of shady occultists are gathered around some torches, humming and droning an unsettling tune. Or take a heal. Heal could be good. We learned from stashing at least a weapon that stashed weapon cards still up, take up space in your deck. Uh, not sure if the same is true of stashed armor. Let's see what the cultist has for sale. Unholy Communion. Whenever this character takes damage from bleeding, your party heals for vitality. Hmm. Very neat. Rend is one cost vulnerable. That's also pretty good. Let's grab an Unholy Communion. Take the Cultist card. That'll give me a, a give me an answer to bleeding. Let's just see what Crossroads does. Just clear. Okay. Hire party members. Dang. Or heal up at the monastery. So we should probably be keeping money for the tavern next time. What does Smithy got? Colossal Smash! Remove all block, deal damage equal to the amount lost. Does cost four though. Damage of final damage is 13 or more. Gain two stamina. This is also a zero cost card. Zero cost deal eight. Seems really good. Enter the hideout, a safe house for you and your fellow loyalists. Slip through here into the next street. But it's a trap. Your awaiting brothers slain, a few elite enders triumphantly brandish their weapons in the dim light. All the exits are covered, there is one way out. Through them. Okay, so this looks a lot less threatening than the optional elite battles through the, uh, through the act. Sledge and his crony shouldn't be too much of a problem here, although he might have special moves that can uh, that can change that. 
Gains Shrug It Off. Every time this character takes more than 15 damage from an attack, they gain 3 charge and 5 block? Bolster. Gain 5 bolster. Gain 5 Batalicize, essentially. Spooky. We're all attacking... No, we're not all attacking the mouse. Okay, that's fine. Let's go ahead and double my block on turn one. That seems fine. Damage 9, weapon damage 11. Kill the other guys first. came from, but I'm okay. Back twice more. So this hits three times for 33? Oh my god, it does. Nice. Slice and dice, baby. row to separate their turns, essentially. will points. Noted. No turn for you. I really, really do like the soundtrack quite a lot. Let's see here. Yeah. So I can return that to my hands. And now we have a lot of charge, so this does decent damage. I wouldn't call that amazing by any means. going by the way, Janet. Had a really good time with the Banners of Ruin so far. Blue number like a limit for powers? Kind of, yeah. It's the willpower resource, which is only used by certain cards. Cards have a, a stamina cost in yellow and then a willpower cost in blue. card has different prices, depending on what it offers. Not at, not at full HP. Doesn't matter, because you're dead. Dead. D-E-D -E -D dead. Carnage! Ruin a card in hand! Finally, the first card that we see that offers that. Do 8 damage and 3 bleed. Each time you play this card, the damage is increased by 8, and the bleed is increased by 3. Oh. So it's a scaling mechanism. I'll try it. I'll try it. Superior Light Armor. And block and one stamina per turn. 
these in the stash. All right, we're going to upgrade the will on Cartwright. So that he can play his um, Galvanize one more time. Strong stuff. Restore 15 vitality, gain one poison. <laughs> Interesting. The opposite of stalling. Remembering that poison ticks up, so... That's kind of spooky, but you can block poison. Bulls charge. If the target has moved this combat, apply 6 bleed and 3 vuln. Wow. Character gains half their block as charge. All opponents gain one rage. Whenever this character deals damage, that damage is doubled. Alright, we gotta try all or nothing. We're so good at gaining block. That's gonna give an immense amount of charge. Charge doing bonus damage on your next attack. So good. He's so small! Ooh, three by three to an opponent's lane. Shuffle an injury into the discard. This character has charge, lose it, and draw two. For battle tempo. In one times five block, interesting. We'll take reckless burst. Be some damage, and you guessed it. Upgrade stamina one more time. Wealth, excellence, or unity. 1,000 florins. The bodies before you are claimed in, clamored in fine fabrics, jewelry, and gilded weapons. Take what time you have to loot their corpses. Glorious fight. Take a moment to reconsolidate what you learned and strengthen your resolve, gaining one level or unity. Take a full heal. Level up a character. I'll take the money. And a fight. This one. Note that we did not heal after that combat. We're still at 37 here. Our max HP has been going up, and we've got much more dangerous opponents here. Our Axman. Axman! I think I want to do that, right? Tempting, though. Not with the Kimbo in hand, of course. That's true. Currently, I don't have a way to actually play that card. Unless I purge my uh, Winded with um, whatever this ability is called. That the bear has. I guess we could also use Invigorating Blow to gain the stamina for it. That sounds difficult to do. Calculated strikes.
cards are in this deck already. Bots. Instead, ruin this card. Okay, so here's what a ruin card looks like deal five, take one. Interesting. Damage goes through block, but as far as we've seen, other types of damage do not. I withdraw. Damage plus eight on heavy blow. I think we're done adding cards for now. How many cards are in the deck? Thirty-four. That is that is chunky. Chance to heal, receive blessings, or modify your deck with the sage. I want whatever blessings are. Give me that. The wolf's voice commands a quiet respect from the crowd, all absorbed in reverence, but he pauses you as you approach, fixing you with a knowing, sympathetic stare. We have all known hurt brothers, he says in a low voice, moving to embrace you, but we might aim to live as the Apastriox did. Burning bright in Tenfir's wake. He lightly presses the palm palm of his paw to your forehead. Pray to gain high spirits for the next combat. Remove a card or thank the monk for his blessing. Pay 250 florins. Gain inner strength. Upgrade token. Plus three stamina cost. Spawn a bless. Giving you 10 charge. But plus 3 stamina cost. Like, I can barely afford that, right? Let's addition by subtraction. Give me a card remove. Take out one of these stinky strike cards. And we can still visit the Sage. What's up, Sage? You approach the ancient figure who looks older than the knotted wooden walking stick he leans on. Some florins for a wise fellow. Gain his skill. Remove a card, reroll the talent. I'll pay for the... I'll pay for clarity. There's a guard as well. Give me an upgrade token. Plus one stamina cost to draw... Three cards. Yes, please. Go ahead and put that on. Put that on momentum. Wishing Will also offers an upgrade token. Incense. Bargain with death! A hooded figure offers up some pale sticks of incense, each with a thid, thin red vein. Sneaking through it. I can't remember if you're allowed to move tokens around. I think you are. Unlike the upgrades of other games. Let's see. Maybe? Maybe not. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe on a different screen? Yeah, maybe. Another token. Let's see. 
humble stone well reveals itself to you in the center of the street. Most folks don't know what this is, the beggar whispers. I see the crow's foot on your cloaks. Speak his name and he shall reward you. Great token. Gain ten florins on the, on the card. Wish for wealth or wish for humility. Remove a card from your deck and gain a random upgrade token. I... Yes, I can move them around. It looks like. So yes, we can re remove the will cost from... Galvanize, which is a huge deal. And we got another plus one cost, draw three. Good. Or card draw, please. That on the round shield. That seemed pretty good. But we've been ambushed. Very well. Like that, Revit. I believe each each card can only have one gem in it, but I'm not 100% on that. Well... Be less if they're bleeding. Yes, that does work. If there's no cards in hand, I don't have to ruin anything. How nice of them to split themselves up into two groups for me. Thank you. That's right, yeah, so when we when we remove our, our stamina debuff, it's the next turn that we actually gain the energy. It's slightly awkward. But only slightly. Alright. Gonna draw so many cards. So many cards. Oh, I can give myself bleed. Now that's interesting. We see I have unholy communion, so this can actually heal everybody, right? Yeah, they are all different cards. Kind of interesting. Ooh. 
This isn't exactly a healing repair, right? Pick six, five, four, three, two, one. And then heal for zero, one, two, three. But it's healing the mouse. So it might be worth it. Because it's healed four to everybody. I think the deciding factor is that waiting takes longer than not waiting, so I'm gonna not wait. One more of these. Hey, there's the incense. I want to deal with death. As you approach the figure, they draw further into the shadows in a sh series of frail shuffles. The three sticks are each coated in a dark, smoky dust. Three gifts he offers, it mutters in a husky, shaky voice. A savored breath is all he requires. As you lean closer, you notice the red vein on the rightmost stick doesn't glint in the moonlight. Like the other. Every character in your party. So we can increase our vitality, but we get a downside. Lose health whenever we gain gold seems pretty spooky. Whenever a party member dies, the survivors lose max vitality. Okay, that I can probably work around. Or the ash stick. Each combat spawn tooth and nail to your hand. Whenever a character plays a skill card, they take one vitality damage. That seems... horrifying. Whenever a character plays a skill card, that's like all the time. I'll take 10 max vite though. And the Alder stick. Because I'm not planning on having anybody die, at least not currently. The lane, remove the next two cards. Take a heal. Blackfoot contact. A Blackfoot weasel brandishes his arsenal of foul looking concoctions under his cloak. These beauties are for some Ender Gone cloaks, but looks like you could use some of this for the pain, that is. He hands you a familiar looking bottle, carefully armored with fine crafted leather. My last bottle. Heal the big man. Tastes foul enough that you wonder if he really did just poison you. Offering thanks, you look up to find him already gone. Investigate the Vagrant. Select a card, move it to this lane, plus one to the counter. Let's talk to the Vagrant. Hey you! Yeah, you! I can't see much of anything anymore, but I know a fellow soldier when I see one. Help me out and I'll show you something that's kept me alive all these long, bloody years. Donate a skill to reroll a talent? So we donate a card. I'm gonna donate guard. And we can reroll one of these cards. I kinda don't mind rerolling all for one, uh, all, for, all or nothing, excuse me, given that I can't actually use it currently. Yeah, let's reroll this. Corner deal weapon damage X times for every stack of winded this character has. That seems good. We are hella winded most of the time on the bear. Over encumbered. A tower of fire glows from the mouth of an alley. A small crowd are gathered at its base. You approach a towering column of fire, a pyre burning for the late king. Upon the many stacks of wood sit an effigy to the old wolf. We're giving him a proper ceremony, a mouse whispers to you from below. It's not right what that prince did. King Esimir was ashamed and would have been doubly shameful of this festival cover-up. He was a stickler for tradition. You should offer something to his memories. Remove two skills. 
Honor the old king, forfeit a talent. Or resentment. The black church burnt under his reign, even if not by his hand. Ruin a card and leave. Let's remove two skills. So many removals. Poison tips are no longer that helpful to me. And we have Rampage for scaling anyway. Let's remove both poison tips. Give me a fight! Oh my. And is it ever is it ever a fight? Got an Ender Brute. Is bolstering. Commune with the bear. And then do three by three to this lane. You can activate the mouse ability more than once. We should try that, I guess. Three by three. Quick attack. Seems fine. Have some block. damage. Yes, we got uh, two back. Good. So it's better to go Rundle Dagger cornered now. Fine. So front row attacks for eighteen to you, two by four to you. Galvanize the bear, sending him to 189 block, use protection on the mouse, sending him to 205 block. And well, that's all she wrote, right? That is all you need. So yeah, they each gain preparation separately, looks like. Oh hey, we applied bleed, good. We'll heal from that bleed. Good. Is there a body slam? We have seen a remove all your block and do damage equal to the amount of block you had a card. So there's at least one way to uh, to do that. Can you believe this is an exhaust? I could just protection again, go to 400 block? That seems absurd. <laughs> 
That seems like it should not be allowed. You know? I'm gonna put that out there. That seems like it should not be allowed. Give that card back. Is there a block cap? I guess is an answer we a question we have to answer, isn't it? My guess would be yes. Somewhere. It just seems reasonable that there would be. Play that every time, that's right. Here, have 700 block. And that's right, block is block is not discarded by default, which I think is a little breakable for this game. But I think I'll forgive it. Eight stacks of preparation. is full. Okay, and 999 is in fact the cap on block. As you as you would reasonably expect. Frenzied gouge. Yes, I'm Rando. Bleed in particular goes through block. Doing damage uh, every turn. We have a card that heals us when we take bleeding to kind of try to counter that that one strategy that would end us, potentially. So my hope is that we're protected from bleed. But you know how these sorts of things go, right? Finds a bow, war bow. Ten damage deals an additional eight damage for every rank between this character and the opponent. It's up to plus sixteen if back row to back row. And another battle axe. So what happens if I unequip an item that has an upgraded card? Imagine I lose the upgrade token. Three for that bow, though. Easier combat on the side here. You nerds! Welcome.
Right, this is my card draw thing. Order. to our mouse. Well, our mouse is a million blocks, so it's fine. Like this many cards seems hella good. general rule. Toe. Whenever this character attacks an opponent on the same lane, gain 6 block. There's that Colossal Smash again. Remove all your block, deal damage equal to the amount lost. We can use that on the mouse, actually. I'm gonna take this. Because the mouse can get tons of block. Although we are gonna give additional stamina to Cartwright, so he's got 3 per turn. A new passive for him as well. Wrathful. So your turn if the character is less than 30% health, double your first attack in damage each turn. That's potent. But we're not going to be at the low. Whenever this character discards, they gain one regeneration. Or Titan. Whenever this character plays a three or higher cost card, they gain a stamina and draw a card. I guess we'll take Titan, but I don't have a lot of three costs. Certainly neither Wrathful nor Minimalist will do much. Can't say I'm thrilled with that passive. What about you? Everyone on this character's rank starts combat with one Vigor, blocking our first loss of stamina. Patient. At the start of your turn, if this character has any will, they draw one card. So just plus one draw per turn, since we almost never use all of Cartwright's will. That's perfect. Or Dannington, rather. Cartwright is the name of the bear. Cartwright is the name of the bear. Understood. Uh, and you have plus two will because of Blessed, so let's just keep upgrading your stamina. Six and three seems pretty good. Oh my god, I love it. A beaver with a wild grin beckons you to his tent. Weapons and armor or buy cards? No, I gotta talk to the beaver man. <clears throat> a beaver approaches you draped in vibrant festival garments. His face is alight with gleeful expression. Welcome, friends. Beravo the illustrious. Illuminate your soul. On this blessed night, I will offer you an opportunity to heal your past, to remedy your regrets. But I must warn you, should you falter, you will lose a part of yourself forever! I'm not exactly liking Reckless Burst, so let's try rerolling it. Lose all stamina, gain twice that amount in charge for next turn. Sure. 
try that. Splendid! A knife merchant? Smug looking beaver is obsessively polishing his wares as they glint in the light of the festival lanterns. An elite combat? Or disheartened? Party takes 10 damage. Well, let's buy some knives. They're just the standard cards. Like charge equal to weapon damage. Move slash swap to the front rank. Hmm. If I had more multi hits, I would be about the war cry. Let's leave. Alright, elite combat, let's do you. Clear advantage on you. Turn back and get caught in the open, or press onwards and take the fight to them. Ooh, three backline hairs with bows this time. Ender Clipper. Poison. Poison is blockable, so we don't need to worry about it too much. play probably two calculating strikes to get our card draw going. We'll unholy communion on the bear to avoid with any bleed nonsense. Could Colossal Smash right now for 53 damage? That won't even kill one of them though. And I need that block. Removing all my block. Like how much worse is this than Body Slam? Good lord. I think I want to deal with these poisoning nerds first. They seem pretty nasty. It does banish itself, I realize. Crossbow by crossbow men in front is pretty bad. Ooh. They attack four times, supplying poison for each hit. Gonna be a lot of poison. Okay, we do have protection available and galvanize. Perfect. Okay, that'll be all the block we're gonna need for the whole fight, probably. Easy. Oh, I probably should have waited on that, but that's okay. I could have done that. Nice. I can get that back. And that doesn't even apply to... You, right? Not a problem. Not a problem. Oh, 
this. Banish two non-ruin cards from your hand, deal 20 damage, gain marked. It's actually pretty good. It only does a debuff when the affected creature dies, so it's not a bad penalty for us to have when we're not planning on dying at all. I think we broke it. Hey, here's Colossal Smash. Let's just delete you. Actually, wait, what's happening this turn? Backing there. Poison. Maybe I shouldn't do that. <laughs> but I want to. Got protection and colossal smash. Shame I don't have enough to play them both. Alright, fine. I'll just super block then. If you insist. because I have too much preparation. Too much? Too much preparation. Two times eight, good lord, man. Ruin a ruin card, that just makes sense. Already got 900 block. Remove hull block, no. bit of that pew pew. Easy peasy like. Alright, what do we got here? Where's our Colossus Smash? There it is. Get him! Bonk! Easy. Oh, the poison though. Alright, well that wasn't too bad. Take a, another Akimbo. Seems like one of our best attacks, so I'll take one more. And there's that Blood Sacrifice again. Could be healing with our uh, thingy. Scoundrel's Cloak. At the start of every turn, gain Anticipation if you don't already have it. Reducing the next incoming damage to zero. That seems much better than the Superior Medium Armor for our rat. And it looks nice and cute, too. Onwards. Winded is not helpful. Winded reduces our uh, actions per turn, our uh, stamina per turn. But it comes with some seriously heavy armor that gives lots of block. Surely Tenfir is watching over you. Surely. I 
I don't want to take the winded armor off. Uh, well, the reason we're getting 999 block more accurately is why is because we have the super armor. Most of our armor is coming from doubling effects, like in Trench, where we double our current armor, and the super heavy armor gives Cartwright the large number, the large block to begin with, so that we can start to double it. If we don't have an, uh, any, if we don't have the stuff in the first place, <clears throat> we don't get to, don't get to do the thing. More stamina for Dannington, sure. You saw it's just like a regular combat if you take the fight option, so I will get even more stamina. You can buy and sell at a black market. Let's go. Shady looking bear looms in the shadows of the edge of the street, twirling a loose florin in his hand. You buying or you selling? Either way, be quick about it. Swap two characters' talents. Sell stashed weapons. Not stashed armor, stashed weapons. Oh, we actually get 200 for armor, though. Easy. Oh, but that, uh, that does take our merchant action. So we can't do other things very well. Good evening, Reaction. Hello and welcome. Well, we're rich, but to what end? To what end? I don't really like the battle axe. Can I have no weapon equipped? Seem like it. On expiring, party takes five. Not let it expire, then. It's almost time for a second boss. This time, we'll go to the tavern now that we can... We have lots of money. Let's hire a party member. A level 5 bear, a level 5 mouse, and Mr. DeGray, or Emily Jorkson, the weasel. Let's get a new... New race. Oh, they come up. Uh, they come pre-leveled, so they're four-two. They have concealed blade. Or wait, oh, they have weapon belt. Is the name of this passive? Whenever you draw this character's weapon card, spawn a concealed blade. And they're currently equipped with a spear. Foul wound. Hmm. I don't really like your talents. But you. Convert all the ruins in your hand to rend. Got an exquisite sword. Five damage three times. Gain five block. That's pretty good for two cost. Not sure if I'm allowed to hire more than one. This character plays a talent, random card in hand becomes zero stamina cost. Hmm. Oh, this has a bow. And flow as well. Hmm. There are four three. All right, we'll take the weasel. And yes, I can hire more than one. All right, weasel and mouse, you're both coming with me. Party of four. Uh, I should be able to adjust the positioning, right? Want to gray in the back. Everybody looks great. And we're able- oh, and we're able to swap our uh, weapons out here. Right. 
That's right. If anybody dies, everybody else loses 15 max vitality, too. Don't forget. That is the downside to having more people. And that did add a few cards to the deck, too. Blister! You hear the cruel barbs of a flail clawing across the stone floor. A colossal, steel-clad figure appears ahead. You know this ender, the captain of the drum guard. Big 4v4. Oh my. This character attacks an opponent and half the damage is applied as... Shockwave. So he does some nasty stuff. That's what we're learning. Whenever this character receives damage equal to 5 or less, that damage is ignored. So we're actually just ignoring this hit, right? Because we have um, anticipation. That's actually going to do nothing. And we can play so many cards now. So very many cards. They attack with the bow for their basic attacks. That's kind of neat. That is kind of neat indeed. that anticipation back. Easy. Yeah, so now we're doing 12 to the weasel and 12 to middle mouse, but middle mouse will dodge. So the weasel will special spawns three concealed blades. So weasels seem like they're pretty good at stacking bleed. Status effect. Okay, let's keep adding. Every turn the first card played is banished. Oh, that's what happened. I understand. Okay, that just makes sense.
talent. So this warbow should deal 26. Yeah. of uh, energy left. Or card draw. Wish vitality for me second form. Looks like we could do a ton with four characters now. We're just like buffing. Okay, have fun. allowed. The Parish. Banish all cards in hand, deal take 5 damage and deal 15 vitality damage for each banished card. If the active character dies, double the damage. Hello? You want me to do what? <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. paced boss. Uh, what do we want to do here? To allies on rank. With Jason allies on rank. I think I missed that the last time I played it. Very important keyword there. that card oh because of the uh the water that's right in a random card cost zero there this is blockable oh that used my anticipation noted self damage is also blockable with anticipation it sounds like noted
chance at uh, double team is now a lot better. We could take a second copy of Carnage. Imagine they don't work with each other. Agile. When the character moves, they gain 10 block. I don't think so. Adventurer's Gear. At turn end, gain 5 block and 1 winded for every point of stamina the character has left. Also doesn't seem that helpful. Kind of interesting. Onwards. Alright, let's take excellence this time. Level somebody up. Part right. You must get stronger. And you already are. More stamina. Three damage X times for each stack of bleed. Oh, that's kind of cool. Not on the bear, though, it's not. Five damage X times for each unique status effect on an opponent. That'll tick. That seems like it'll be good against uh, bosses. Alright, and now on to our third street of the run. I believe a run ends after three kind of acts. Three streets, so to speak. We're now in the Noble Quarters, looking like we're making our way towards the castle. We've got Elite God Spearman. 25 defense damage. This character has no neighbors in rank, deal zero instead, so if we could kill the middle one immediately, that would solve a lot of our problems. It's only defense damage, so I wonder if that will fail to do real damage or not. Should have guarded first. Would have done 10 more damage. Sweet. So now they're doing nothing because I killed the middle one. damage to the lane. I wonder if I should be putting the bear in the middle then. It seems reasonable. <clears throat> Damage me? Oh. We get 25 Retaliator. Should we take damage from a character, gain 5 Retaliator? Well, I didn't notice that. 
That's for sure. Alright, well, let's stop doing that then. Well, the bear's gonna take a bunch of damage now. That works. Attackers using ranged weapons are not affected by the retaliate, but they do increase the stacks of retaliate, I think. Very noted. So yes, they're gaining retaliate, but we don't take the retaliation damage. So the bow does pretty well. Cool. Fifteen damage to this rank. Also, skip your turn. Yeah, we could also block Retaliate with the Anticipation buff. Okay, yes, and that was 10, 15, 20. Wondering. ruin cards and draw that many cards again. <laughs> no thanks. More deck modification. More deck modification. Pyre burning for the late king. Let's try forfeiting a talent. You just remove one of our stinky talents that we don't want. Is rising. Uh, no, let's lose weak spot because we're not doing enough vulnerable for that to be good. Blackfoot stash, chance to offload. Catacombs, shortcut the street. These hollowed and ancient walkways predate even the enders. If you could discreetly enter, you could reach your next checkpoint in much better time. I think I want to do that. Let's take a shortcut here. Oh wow, that is a hell of a shortcut. We go from 19 to 2. Straight to the end of the street. Hmm. Okay. I'm honestly down. What's at the smithy? Yeah, kind of like the secret portal event. I was really not expecting the whole street to go away, but I'm not upset by that. Uh, not at all. Not one bit. Five damage to rank, apply three, vulnerable. Yeah, I'll take that. Take the pink powder. Enter the courtyard. The Warden. The commander of the garrison stands before you, flanked by his elite gold cloaks. There is little time left. Finish this fight. All right, Mr. Warden. Oh my, it certainly looks like a final fight. Starting with a hundred block battlefield authority. While this character is alive, opponents cannot exceed, a, exceed block of 120. Well, there there you go, right, right off the bat, we actually have a counter to our strategy. We cannot go over 120 block right now. Oh my. Team damage to this rank. This looks pretty tough. 
So yes, first card played each turn is banished. Not being moved. Halberdiers in the back. And a lot of these guys do AoE attacks, so it's actually harder to stay alive. Beat all their effects. Magnificent Plate. As long as this character has more than 60 block, Bleed turns into Vulnerable instead. Whenever this character takes more than 25 damage from a single attack, the excess damage is ignored and converted into block. So you cannot one-shot this boss, and if you try, you'll make them invulnerable. Whenever this character moves into a new rank, that rank gains 5 charge, and this character's original rank gains 15 block. Wow, lots of buffs and such. Seems like we need to take out these Ender Knights. With, uh, relative... I think these are the first targets we want, the, the left and right, but man, they are tanky. Back ones seem easier to kill. Maybe I should be taking out the back rows. I think I'll lose Deadly Thrall. Oh, uh, what do we want to get rid of, actually? I'll lose setup here, I don't think it's that valuable. is pretty tough, and I actually want to banish cards for now. We've got a lot of cards in this deck. Uh, and if we can thin out the deck by getting rid of the worst of them, we'll actually improve our ability in this combat. So let's keep those for now. Can't have more than one stack of anticipation, I don't believe. Those are our statuses. Fortunate. Or Dannington. Oh, and the warden swap places there. Oh god. All opponents move slash swap and lay. This character's rank gains 15 block. Wow, this is a spooky fight. In zone control. that attack. Any stamina on you? What 
happened. I have zero stamina. That's annoying. I have no idea what happened. Well, that's debilitating. Well, that hits this too. Oh, God. We are in such trouble here. Hitting the weasel a bunch. I might be able to kick this Ender Knight into the back row to prevent their attack. My stuff back. I can get a lot of card draw this turn, okay. I think I'm going to take out the other Halberdier first. It seemed like the easiest targets. And I can get a card back from the discard pile, too. Yeah, I have to imagine that playing through Act 3 would have made this fight easier, but... If I can win without... You know. Why wouldn't I? Did forget about the exhaust effect there for a minute. Game free, that's great. Good. Banish two non ruin cards from my hand to do twenty. Get rid of spear and conceal plane. He skips his turn. The weasel will get hit one time and you're buffing or whatever. Because of the impervious? <laughs> That's interesting. Okay, back row is going. We are taking 15 Jorixen plus. Everything is being targeted. Battle cry. Deal 18 damage to block and apply 3 winded to the opponent party. Removes all stacks of 
triple bleed and poison for himself. Ah, this boss is mean. Okay, don't forget the first card we play is gonna get destroyed, so let's get rid of a stinky card like Foul Wound here. Purge the Demoralize next turn, though, I imagine. Wait, why'd that get purged? Oh, because the next... Yeah, right. Because the next card you play is getting purged. That's right. Bleeding, etc. There's our Warbo. Calculating Strike. As yes, we have five preparation, we'll draw a ton of cards next turn. Nobody is currently bleeding. get through most of their uh, most of their block there but to us let's get rid of that too okay, yes that removed block but didn't do any real damage and then he moved to the front which is the Hey, and we got bleed on uh, on the bear, which is perfect, actually. Good job. Fortunately, we have very few actions this turn because of the warden. Steals the block of the ally with the most block and moves the swaps adjacent to them on rank. So they're going to gain 160 block from this Ender Knight, which is actually good because then we can finish the other knight, too. Don't forget the first card we play will be destroyed, so don't play Galvanize. He's not first. Let's get rid of Sadist's Cunning. Actually, no, let's get rid of Vanguard. Buffing, and you're just doing a thing. Fast. 
This actually didn't seem that bad as a, as a combat. That turn one was scary with all the... Oh god, what are you doing now? Oh no! <laughs> Gravitas, deal damage equal to the current blocks. We're being attacked for 255. Um... That is a lot of damage. Can I move out of the way? in the discard pile currently. your own ally? No. Can I draw anything? Also, no. I can give her a hundred block with protection, but that won't be enough. I could try doing damage to, uh, what's his face, but that also wouldn't be enough. It's a battlefield authority. He's currently attacking De Grey, our archer. And I don't see a way to change that. It said we can't can't gain enough block to actually matter and didn't we have various answers to this, but we just didn't draw any of them this turn. So I guess we're losing one of our rank gonna hurt a bit. Targets the opponent with the lowest vitality. Final targets in the front rank deal more damage to stuff in the back. Mutant. Can I destroy ruin cards? Here's a question for you. Actually, the front row that's attacking this turn, which means dead. Oh, I like that shows a skull. The warbow is held by nobody. Oh, 
Well, in that case, turn this into a ruin. Twelve stacks of preparation, good. Invulnerable. Okay, we're no longer destroying cards each turn. And we're no longer capped on our block either. Careful though, remember if we do more than 25 damage, he actually just gains more block. So I don't want to try to kill him with a hammer smash, for example. Looks like he's pretty non-threatening now that he's the only one left. Carnage is no longer useful, because <laughs> it's actually just helping him now. Funny how that works.
And he'll still try to use absolute loyalty with no allies, so you definitely want to kill him last. Seems like a joke now. Thirty-seven turns of vulnerable. <laughs> and there's Gravitas. No longer has any block. Um, so his party takes fifteen damage now. That's not going to end well for you, sir. at all. GG. Gray died. Well, cool. I wanted to thank everybody for, for tuning in for this uh, sponsored look at Banners of Ruin. I think I'll be back to this game at some point. I, I quite enjoy the, the art style and the soundtrack, and it's got a very intriguing take on uh, the deck building formula, I'd say. I quite like what we saw here, genuinely. Very genuinely. If you want to get this game yourself, you can check it out on Steam. Do that link in chat that'll let the devs know that I sent you. But otherwise, that is going to be it for me today. A much big thank you to everybody for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the deck building. And I'll see y'all next time. Hey, hey everyone. Thanks so much for watching. Did you know that I'm live five days a week on Twitch? Come join us to watch me live, ask questions, or chill with the community. Click the link in the description below to follow and be notified when I'm live. And while you're down there, make like a sandwich and sub to this channel for more fresh Baylor content. Ta-ta for now.